Hi, Fiti. A long time listener, first time caller. Uh, my name is Dr. Jacob. I'm a holistic and wellness coach. Uh, really, your episode on coming of aging has really inspired me a lot, uh, considering I'm meeting a lot of those uh, clients, whether men or women, having existential crisis, or as they call it these days, quarter life crisis. Uh, specifically the, the book King, the Warrior, Magician, Lover. I'm really uh, inspired by you f- even to start a business. But lastly, through the podcast, how you have transitioned from a, a business mentor to a philosopher. So please keep on producing more philosophical, psychological episodes. Uh, as I came for the business, but I'm staying for the wisdom thank you very much hello family uh my name is tepo from south africa pretoria i actually discovered your podcast on spotify i've always thought that spotify was was for music uh silly me i never knew that um i find your work very encouraging i've been listening to all your podcasts the whole day i must say i'm actually addicted it comes at a time when um, I've lost a business that I've built for four years. Um, I closed shop and actually went to start working to actually refinance the dream that I have to actually run my business in a bigger scale. I'm encouraged, ready to take on the world. And I believe that from what I've been listening to, I'm going to come back stronger and even better. I really cannot wait. Hello, VT. A shout out to you guys, you and your team at The Ideas That Matter. My name is Ashley. I am based out here in the East Rand, the east of Johannesburg, that is, uh, in Kempton Park. And I am a big fan of your craft, to say the least. Uh, I'm in the digital marketing and business consulting space. So I'm a web developer as well as many different areas within the transformative AI space. So I run an AI digital marketing agency and I have to admit your podcast has really sort of elevated my thought process, my understanding and motivation in and around my business. So I've got to give you props in that. And I've been fortunate enough to have come through to some of your seminars, your keynotes, and have been a podcast fan, subscriber for the last, I think, three years since you um, first came up with the concept. And I appreciate the journey so far and do hope one day to meet you guys and the team. I hope there's an opportunity to do probably a live podcast where we can be invited because that would be so cool. And yeah, get to know you guys and up on certain things. But the big question, in fact, I probably have two questions for you. And if you would make a podcast around it, this would be so great. Um, the first one is how do you deal, particularly, I think this one is to you, Vusi. How do you deal with depression in business if you have been doing things pretty well and perhaps um, situations of clients retention, maybe client payments? not coming through maybe getting the right clients after a good onboarding process and just having had the conversation and probably the lead up to the prospect in terms of the sales funnel um, chain and you just do everything right but then everything just falls to um, to the ground when you're dealing with the lost point of connection with the client right so let's say you've rendered some services they've given you a deposit but they don't pay you or you get into problems of clients are now you know not being committed to the work or they're not doing things like that and then it sort of like just depresses you a little bit how do you deal with that and then the second part uh, or the second question rather is what motivates you in terms of like the way forward if you've had bad days. So let's say for instance, if you are not feeling well, or if you just have maybe a bad day, how do you get through it? I think 
you know, a lot of uh, podcasters would want to, and sorry, a lot of some of your subscribers would want to also understand that. And I hope we can make a podcast around particularly depression and demotivation in business and how it can just be better. It's time to take your seat at the table. Find out how with Vosi Tembeguayo as we discuss ideas that matter. A catalyst for bold action. Hello, family. Hello, family. It's been so long I've missed you guys. I do hope you guys have been well. And I, I've, I've received so many of your inboxes and messages saying, what's happening with these episodes? Uh, we've been out for, I think, two months. It's probably been three months. I know, I know, I know. And there'll be a video that my team would have posted on our social medias, particularly on the YouTube, telling you all about what we've been up to and what we've been doing in that time. So there are no apologies, do you see? Because we've actually been working behind the scenes. And we're quite excited to see what next brings us in the season. Who can believe that we're already in June of 2024? Like we're halfway through the year. I can't even remember how we got here. I, I vividly remember us starting the year talking about New Year's resolutions. I think you guys might have remember this. Remember when we were talking about New Year's resolutions? And I, I warned you then. I said, don't do resolutions because they're just a setup for failure. I told you. Rather than give yourself resolutions about what you want to achieve in the year, you should rather make a commitment about the, the things you're going to do at a ritual basis. So what are the rituals that you want to see? Are you going to wake up early every day or read a page every day or something like this? Rituals are better drivers of success than resolutions tend to be. So I vividly remember warning against this. All of that notwithstanding, here we are. Welcome to another episode of the Ideas That Matter VT podcast. Ashley, thank you so much for that testimonial, great testimonial from Ashley there in the East Rand. For those of you who don't know, the East Rand is the greatest part of South Africa without question. People from the East Rand absolutely rock. Now, admittedly, Ashley is from the wrong part of the East Rand. He's from Kempton Park. He's not far east enough, but east enough to just qualify to be part of the East Rand. People from Kempton Park are like people from Bedford View, isn't it? They get the association with the East Rand, but they come from a part of the East Rand that is so far west that we in the east are like, yeah, comrade, I'm not sure. I'm not so sure about this East Rand thing you're talking about. Ashley, thank you for that question. This question around how do you deal with depression in business when the results of what you're doing don't meet your expectations? And the second question was, what keeps me motivated day after day? I'm going to answer the first second question first, Ashley, which is, we actually did an episode on uh, embracing struggle. And that's exactly what I want to target this episode about. I want to target this episode at helping you understand why it's important to embrace struggle. So what motivates me day after day is I don't think of struggle as an anomaly in my life. I think of it as a part of life. Think of it this way. When you're driving on the road and you hit a pothole, that's an anomaly. But when you're driving on the road and you come across a speed bump, that's a part of the road. Now, most people tend to think of struggle as potholes, not speed bumps. The difference here is that a pothole will ruin your car if you don't, if you don't, if you don't drive carefully. But a speed bump is most likely going to temper the speed at which you're driving without changing the course of your direction. In my mind, that's exactly what struggle is. Struggle is nothing more than just something to slow you down and make sure that you are being really deliberate and intentional about where you want to go and what you want to do next. So the main thing to understand here is that struggle, frankly, is a part of it. It's a part of life. It's a part of the road. It's not an anomaly to the road. And once you understand that, you not only deal with struggle differently, but also you embrace it. And I'll tell you why you embrace struggle. Or as, uh, as Chad always says, embrace the suck. The reason you embrace struggle is because struggle tells you that you're still in the ring. See, if there is no struggle, and there is never a struggle, that can only be if you're no longer in contestation. But if you're still in the ring, still pushing for more, still wanting more, still driving yourself to achieve even more, then, my friend, you must expect struggle. More, by definition, means you're going to be unlocking levels you know nothing about. You're going to be doing things you've probably never done before. And there's going to be a learning curve. And that learning curve is going to come with struggle. You're not likely to get everything right the first time. Nobody gets everything right the first time. 
In fact, it's most probable you'll get most things wrong the first time you do them. Your question, though, which rocks back to the first question you asked, is you've gone through this onboarding process with a client and suddenly seeing things are just not working out. I tend to think about business in a formulaic sense, Ashley, and what I mean by this is that most things are predetermined. They're quite deterministic. If you follow a particular path, the outcome will be what the outcome is. If you work out twice a day and change your diet, your body's going to change. It's not rocket science. If you read a chapter in a book every single day for the next five years, you'll be more intelligent. Your brain will be more elastic, what they call brain plasticity, right? There are certain things that when we do, the outcomes are absolutely guaranteed. If you save a dollar a day for the rest of your life, by the time you retire, you're going to have a substantial amount of money. It's It's not a function of what it is you believe in. It's a function of what it is that you're doing. And so when I think about life in this way, in the deterministic rules that set up life, what I want you to understand is the following. If there is something you're doing that's not giving you the outcomes that you desire, don't change the outcome, change the thing you're doing. There must be something in your process. You perhaps haven't architectured it correctly, or you've not designed it correctly, or you've not documented it correctly, or this is perhaps probably most probable in your case, is you actually have the wrong kind of client for the thing you want to do. Very common for entrepreneurs, by the way. They get the wrong kinds of clients for the things they want to do. So what should you do here? First, embrace the struggle. Think of the struggle as an indication that you are still in the ring, that you're still fighting for next. Think of the struggle as the opportunity for you to exercise that muscle. There's a lot of work that's been done around this, around whether or not resilience is a learned ability. And some academics who, having done this work, have proven to us now that resilience, grit is the other word for it, is actually something that we grow and develop. They show us in the research that if you are exposed to Uh, high levels of stress early on in your life, that can have a particular impact on how your brain is, is formed and therefore a particular impact on how you relate with stress and how stress manifests itself in your life. This is academic research that's been done to prove each of these points. What's important for you is to understand that the neuroscience of resilience is pretty clear. The data is without question Uh, irrefutable. It's very clear, the data. It's around understanding what restricts and drives trauma, understanding what restricts and drives your experiences and responses to trauma, and how some of these cross-disciplinary functions interact to drive what it is that's going to be your response and your outcome. So your question, what should you do? First, think about struggle as an opportunity for growth. See, Most of what we perceive and experience as stress is actually a function of association, not fact. Let me say it the following way. Things, we experience things to be how we associate those things rather than what those things factually are. That's literally how trauma works. It embeds itself in association. This is a good indication. Listen to this. You ever dated somebody who'd had a partner in the past that cheated on them? When they start dating you, they look for the behaviors that the partner in the past who cheated on them was exhibiting. And the minute you exhibit those behaviors, they associate that to mean you are cheating. It's called association trauma, right? It's the idea that having experienced something in the past, it's just a natural part of who we are as human beings. It's pattern recognition. We're constantly looking for patterns. So having experienced something in the past, we form a narrative and a story. That narrative in our mind becomes a fact, and that fact becomes an association anchor. And the minute we see something that even slightly resembles what it is we think it is, we therefore believe it to be exactly that association. So in your mind, what you've got to do is disabuse yourself of the association that you have with, as you perceive it, failure. So perhaps it isn't that your clients are not behaving in the manner that you desire. Perhaps it rather is that you have got the incorrect framing of how your clients should behave. Maybe that's what needs to change. Perhaps it rather is that you need to better communicate with your clients around what your expectations are. Maybe that's what needs to change. So first, reframe 
how you think about what you associate your behavior of your clients to be. The second is reframe your mindset toward adversity. As I've said earlier, adversity is something that builds strength. Once you understand that facing challenges builds your muscle that faces challenges, then how you build, deal with challenges will change. And therefore, you'll show up differently. And third, it's really important to find something that anchors you when you're dealing with difficult times. Now, the road of entrepreneurship in particular is lonely. It's, it's anomalous in this, in that there aren't mo- many things that individuals and human beings do that by their very nature are lonely. But entrepreneurship is certainly one of those. It's a very lonely thing to do. And what I often advise entrepreneurs to do is just to find a place of peace, a place of comfort, a community, if you will, where they can get a better sense of themselves and a better sense of the opportunities that they're pursuing and the struggles that they're having. Once you surround yourself with communities, it often tends to add, and this will be my last note on this, the most important thing missing when people are facing struggle. Context. Context matters. How you think about where you are and what you're experiencing and what it means, that matters. So for a lot of us then, it's about understanding those three drivers. First, association. What have you associated these events or these outcomes to mean? And disabuse yourself of an association that is not rooted in science or is just not rooted in fact. Second, see the opportunity. What is the opportunity for you to grow, to learn, to develop, to improve? And how do you approach your challenges as an opportunity to be better? And third, just as I've mentioned it, context. What is the context of the time and space you're finding yourself in? And what does that mean for who you need to be, how you need to show up, and what next looks like for you? Thank you, Ashley for that highly inspirational insert into this podcast. For those of you out there that are dealing with fear and dealing with despondency and dealing with struggle, my only message to you are the three important words. Do it anyway. Do it afraid, do it scared, but do it anyway. Friends, family, that's our podcast for this week. Send us those audio recordings on plus two seven eight one five zero five seven double six seven. That's plus two seven eight one five zero five seven double six seven. We look forward to hearing from you. This podcast was proudly brought to you by My Growth Fund in partnership with Sound and Sounds Media.